and welcome to California Bountiful. I'm your host, Aubrey Aquino. Shearwater Tavern is located inside the Carmel Mission Inn. They offer a quintessentially Carmel experience by showcasing the Monterey Peninsula through their menu and local purveyors on every dish they plate. Hi, welcome. I'm Chef Fabian at the Shearwater Tavern Kitchen. We are going to do today our salmon dish. Uh, why I choose the salmon? Because talking about California and grown veggies, we have a lot of them into that dish. Even if you've seen, you will see at the beginning, during the process of the dish, you will see a beautiful cauliflower, carrot, mushrooms, tomatoes. So all of them, they are growing and locally sourced here. So we're gonna just use salt, pepper, a dash of olive oil. And we're gonna sear, skin down on the pan. I'm gonna give you a nice one minute, a minute and a half. I'm gonna just flip for one side. To flip for the other side. Just to keep moisture inside is regular sear using the salmon. Flip. And then we wanna finish in the oven. I'm gonna start working with our uh, veggies. We're gonna use the rainbow carrots we have here. A little bit of olive oil, salt. I wanna lay down in our pan. Again, a little bit of the olive oil on one side. We're gonna do exactly the same with our yellow cauliflowers. So we lay next to the purple cauliflower. So I wanna place this in the oven at 325 degrees with a little bit of container of water. Now we're gonna work on the sofrito. Easy going sofrito, but you wanna use onions and garlic. We're going to start with the butter in a really hot pan. The onato paste has this nutty pepper flavor. So I tried to use this caramelized butter at the beginning to keep adding more I wish you can smell. If you smell it, you smell more than that, the onions and garlic. We will just let it cook for a minute. And we are going to add now the onado paste and the soybean paste. We let it go for another, another minute. And I'm gonna use a little bit of the cumin. You can go, again, flavors and spices. You can go in any way you like it. You can go more or less, or just change it. This is a base, and it's, it's only the base I like it, but you can modify up on your liking, right? Coconut milk. And we're gonna use a little bit of molasses. And we wanna transfer this to our, our blender. If you see this very hot, let it cool it down a little bit before start working on the blender. Always use cooling liquids into the blender. Don't get hurt if you use really hot liquid when I start blending, okay? It's cold liquid where I cook the plantains. I'm going to add into our mix. When I grab the plantain, I'm gonna start adding the plantain pieces into the blender. So let me show you how it looks right now. It is a really, really creamy texture. And that will be our base. Now we're gonna work with the mushrooms. First I wanna use the one I love it, which is the king oyster. It is for me the steak of the mushroom. So I wanna lay down on the base on the pan when it's really hot. And then we're adding the rest, the trumpet and the shimeji, which will be really a quick turn. Now I wanna take my veggies out, give you nice steers, a nice, nice thing. And now we wanna check on our salmon if it's ready. We are going ready to plate it. It's pretty much medium well, which I like it. Some people, it's depending on, up on you like it, they want well done or medium well. Our veggies. Then we wanna add our salmon. And then two or three leaves about cilantro. We're gonna do a nice stir. 
And that will be all. In the hustle and bustle of busy mornings, I have one food that can be your sunny side solution. I'm Ashley Hawk, a registered dietitian and mom of two, and I understand that mornings can be crazy. You guessed it, it's the excellent world of eggs. Did you know that eggs are a complete source of protein and they contain heart healthy omega-3 fatty acids? They also contain choline and lutein, which is good for your brain and your eye health. Eggs are also really easy to meal prep. You can make a batch of hard boiled eggs on top of the stove so they're ready to go throughout the week or you can add them to a snack box. I also love the fact that you can make eggs in the microwave and then you can add them on top of a bed of greens or eat them as is. And of course, we can't forget breakfast burritos. This is a great way to use up extra veggies that you have on hand and make a big batch for the week ahead. These are just three simple recipes, but you can head to ashleyhogrd.com for more information. Still to come, a wine and chocolate pairing that's bar none. And after the break, we'll find common ground with a couple soil savvy movie makers. California Bountiful is brought to you by the California Farm Bureau. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three. So much to love along this ride. That's why Nationwide is on your side. Our childhoods stay with us well beyond our early years. Trauma or other stressful events or situations, sometimes known as adverse childhood experiences or ACEs, can increase our risk of serious physical and mental health conditions, along with a lot of other challenges. But our story doesn't end there. Amigos y amigas, in our stories we find unity. We're in this together. Through our culture and shared narratives, we embark on a journey of healing. No matter what we faced early in our lives and along the way, healing is possible. As we face challenges, we build hope and create joy together. To learn more or for support, visit numberstory.org. Because together we heal, feel empowered, and continue on our remarkable journey. For ourselves and for generations to come. If the soil dies, we die. Nature is the mother of us all, and if mama ain't happy. Common Ground is a documentary with a clean-cut mission, and it's not afraid to get dirty in the process. Common Ground is all about regenerative agriculture, and as residents of California in Ventura County, it affects us personally. Where we live, it's an agricultural community, and there's lots of conventional agriculture happening all around us, and we are really committed to not only the well-being of communities and the ecosystems, but also the farmers who are growing the food. And ultimately, through regenerative agriculture, we can draw down carbon, sequester it through building healthy soil, and in the process, stabilize the climate. Husband and wife filmmakers Rebecca and Josh Tickell expose personal stories from those on the front lines of the food movement and explain it all starts with what's beneath our feet. It's the basis for everything we eat. So those of us who eat, which is all of us, we need to think about soil. The nutrition in the soil equals the nutrition in our food. Everything from obesity to Parkinson's to all the way to Alzheimer's whether it's pesticide related or food related, we see an incredible uptick, and it's the exact same uptick as the deterioration of the soil has been going down. Those two things are related, and Common Ground the movie shows us how to fix that. The doc spotlights a diverse selection of farmers using alternative regenerative models of agriculture that may be the answer to balance the climate, save our health, and stabilize America's economy. We're trending towards regenerative agriculture. We're trending away from chemicals. 
tillage, the farmers only getting eight cents of the dollar for the produce that they're selling, which is crazy. And over the next decade, we're going to see everything trending in this direction from the food that you're buying in a store to the farmer that lives next door. And maybe even you, maybe the person you right now watching this will become a farmer because that is the way that humanity will stabilize the climate and get healthy. There's also star power adding fuel to the film. Common Ground is a love letter to our children and to all future generations. And uh, for us, it's a love letter to our children. It's a, an examination of how we got ourselves into the mess that we're in. And then it's a look at the promise of regenerative agriculture to stabilize the climate. And then it's a commitment that we're gonna fight like hell to save the future for our kids. And I think when Jason Momoa, Rosario Dawson, Donald Glover, Woody Harrelson, Laura Dern, and Summer Holder, when they got a sense of what we were up to with this film, as parents, they were absolutely adamant that they get to participate as well because they're just as com committed to their children's future as the rest of us. As for how they plan to measure the film's success? We want to see 100 million acres of regenerative land in the U.S. That would be just over 10 percent. We think that's going to be a tipping point. We think once 10 percent of the farmers are doing it and they're making money and everyone else sees it, boy, they're just going to rush for it. Now, your bountiful landscapes. I'm Charmaine Turbo, Head Farmette here at Turbo Farms in Los Altos. When it comes to cracking the code on the trendiest blooms this spring, I ask what screams lush, roughly, and wow? And of course, what blooms in the color of the year, Pantone peach fuss? Some of my must-haves include Keto peonies, the new superhero hybrid peonies. Plants are quicker to establish and boast plenty of blooms. They're more tolerant of our warmer climate, making them ideal foundation plants. I love Uchigias, scrumptiously and Hillary. These beauties have luscious pom-pom sized blooms kissed with apricot. Next, Italian ranunculus, specifically the Elegant series. These ranunculus are bigger and better than ever with high petal count, strong stems, and extra long vase life. They are sure to be crowd pleasers. Lastly, double Narcissus, it's time for traditional single cone daffodils to step aside and say hello to double Narcissus. These luscious beauties look like they're exploding with ruffles. Delna Shaw and Angel Fire are two of my favorites. Charmaine Turbo from Turbo Farms, signing off, flowers or bust. Coming up, a perfect pairing that's born among the vines. But first, we visit a Northern California ranch that's proud of its sun-fed products. Hey, Brad, you know how Nationwide is more than an insurance company? Oh, yeah. They're one of America's largest financial services companies. Could we get that in a song like Business Life Retirement? Or Nationwide's there to protect. Uh, maybe leave the songs to me. But I'm the one with three Grammys. I'm kind of the jingle guy. I'm not sure I agree with that. Well, I'm not sure I like your hat. Well, it would never fit on you. Wow. <laughs> The California Farm Bureau has protected the diverse agricultural interests in the Golden State for over a century. As part of the California Farm Bureau, you'll add your voice to the combined strength of over 34,000 farmers, ranchers, and families through our state. That means more connections, more influence, and more opportunity to fight for the issues that impact your life. With your support behind us, California Farm Bureau's robust government affairs, federal policy and farm pack, and legal teams work tirelessly to advocate at all levels of government, protecting and promoting our shared way of life. Together, California Farm Bureau and our members are standing up for farmers, ranchers, and families throughout the Golden State every day, working to cultivate a bountiful future for all Californians. We're in Dunnigan, California. We're about 30 minutes north of the SunFed headquarters in Woodland. And we're on a ranch today in springtime, which is beautiful. And the uh, grass is green, and this set of cattle is part of a cooperating herd that we work with, my family and SunFed. At SunFed Ranch, we, we try to raise cattle in concert with the natural world around them. Uh, we believe in 
in taking what Mother Nature provides and doing the best with it we can to raise a healthy grass-fed beef. And we do that uh, by taking a long view. Uh, we look to manage soil health, to manage the animal's nutrition, and do so in a way that regenerates the soil because we want to be able to, year after year, manage the properties that are under our care in a way that helps us feel good about what we're doing for the earth and feel good about the product that produces for grass-fed beef. Rancher Matt Byrne is rooted in tradition when it comes to raising his herd. In my family, I'm the sixth generation. I have two boys uh, and a dog who I hope will be the seventh generation in our family to raise cattle in California. <laughs> And, and we do so by thinking long ways. And that means we think about how do we regenerate, how do we improve every year so that the next year can be a little better. And when you're in the, and you're in the game for years and decades and generations, you got enough years in front of you that it starts to really matter. We started with just a couple of families on, uh, you know, on, a, on a few thousand acres. Uh, today, we're working with 20 families around the Western United States, most in California. And in doing so, we're impacting a couple million acres uh, and many families, as well as the team that we've built to help uh, market and sell the beef. Like their name suggests, sun-fed cattle spend their days in wide open spaces with plenty of sunshine and zero stress. Sun-fed ranch really uh, is, is meaningful because we're a solar-powered beef operation. Um, a lot of agriculture is, is driven heavily by fossil fuel. In our case, we're looking at millions of solar panels across these green hills. Every single blade of grass is catching solar energy turning it into plant energy, and then as the cattle feed themselves across the landscape, we end up with uh, the highest quality beef available. <laughs> Raising cattle 100% on grass is in some ways an old way of, of the cattle business. Uh, over the last many decades, uh, grain feeding and corn feeding have really become the industry standard. And so in a lot of ways, we're taking uh, what's old and making it new again. And, and we're doing so not the way that granddad did it, but by using science as well. And so we try to manage grazing. We track really carefully the individual animals that are part of the system. So we know how they're performing, what their needs are. And, and so by taking an old system and developing our own way around it, uh, we really believe we're delivering not just the, the beautiful picture that uh, California's landscapes allow, but also the highest quality in a fully grass-fed, grass-finished system. All cattle eat grass. In California, here, uh, and with the philosophy we follow, uh, we're fortunate that these cattle can eat nothing but grass. And so it's not just grass like your lawn, it's, it's oats and it's forages and it's forbs and it's clovers and it's all these things that the cattle naturally select. And that's what drives the health benefits, whether you're a human or a pet, uh, you're getting the benefit of everything that animals eat. Which I take this holistic view uh, that the way that we raise the cattle uh, and the way that we bring them to market is going to be good for the earth. It's going to be good for the communities that we work in all throughout California. We're, uh, we're blessed with uh, green grass in the wintertime, which we're, uh, we're standing here today and looking at. Uh, and because of that, we can offer a year-round healthy product and we don't have to bring feed, corn, other grains to the cattle in a feedlot. We can let the cattle finish themselves right here. From pasture to plate, sun-fed ranchers take pride in the cattle they raise, the way nature intended. Over the last 15 years, though, we've sent product to almost every state in the union. We, we deliver weekly uh, as far east as Atlanta, Georgia, Florida, and we're looking for places where we can find a consumer and a customer who cares. We don't sell to every grocer. Uh, we don't sell to every restaurant. What we try to find is a great partnership from people who value the same things we do. And where we can find that and where we can affordably ship it, we have a group of customers. Time for Farm Bureau Foodies. Here we are today at the Morningstar Company with Aaron to tell us a little bit about what they do here and how tomatoes actually get to our plate. The Morningstar Company started in 1970 okay. with Chris Roofer. He was a truck driver, so it was him in one truck. And he was, like the truck we just like, saw go by. Yep, we're okay. a trucking company at heart. And so Chris was driving up and down the state hauling agricultural commodities from mm -hmm. field to factory and saw that there was disruption. There was the interstate coming along the west side of the San Joaquin Valley, connecting north, middle, and south, as well as the state water project bringing water via the aqueduct yes. to the west side as well. So that could change the game and yeah. move processing and growing from coastal regions into the San Joaquin Valley where it could be more cost effective. So he saw this opportunity and decided 
Let's this add some is, scale. Uh, yeah. And it was at the same time that technology was changing. There was a septic processing technology coming out. And what we would call today Industry 3.0, the computerization of yeah. factories and the beginning of automation was just starting right about that time as well. So with that, we, we found, Chris found that he could uh, move processing from coastal regions into the San Joaquin Valley. Which is where are we at today, for folks who don't know? Correct. We're in Los Banos. Okay. Uh, right next door to Stanislaus County. Yes. Uh, so uh, Chris started his first factory in 19, early 1980s. Okay. Um, and then he went and built his own factory in the early 90s, and that was the start of the Morningstar Packing Company. So since then, we've grown to have three factories, two in Los Banos in the San Joaquin Valley, and one in the Sacramento County, uh, Sacramento Valley in Williams. So what kind of products are coming out of this, this factory here? Liberty does it all. It's the second largest factory in the world. The first largest is our William factory, and then the third largest is our Los Banos wow. factory. All three factories do bulk paste. Okay. But Liberty Special, they do bulk diced. They also do canned items, pouch items. They do lycopene extraction, green tomatoes, wow. organic tomatoes. They make drums, they make bins. They even make their own power here as well. Amazing. Yeah. Wow. So some of those staples that like me as a grocery shopper might pick up uh, in a grocery store, those are the types of things that your ingredients are going into. Very much so. So behind those large brands yeah. on the store shelves is us and a number of other California tomato processors. Very cool. Up next, I heard it on the grapevine, turning wine into chocolate. Sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. Sometimes we try to fit it all in. Sometimes we don't know what's in store. Sometimes we find what we're looking for. Sometimes we're rolling easy and free. Sometimes one and one makes three so much to love along this ride that's why nationwide is on your side Are you looking to uncover more of the bounty of California's rich, diverse, and delicious food and wine scene? Then it's time to get social with us. Find even more great content from farm to fork and everything in between, like recipes behind the scenes on food and wine tours, plus useful info on what's good for you and so much more. Join an engaging community of like-minded foodies and tell us what great story ideas you have for us too. So what are you waiting for? Get in on the conversation now. Find, follow, and talk to us on social at CA Bountiful. Well, the idea was a long time in coming in a way in that we began to look at the sustainability programs in the fine coastal vineyards that Jackson Family Wineries farms and began to wonder if there was more we could squeeze from a Chardonnay grape and we discovered that at the end of harvest from fresh pressed grapes there is a residual skin stems and seeds referred to as Chardonnay mark or Chardonnay pumice that is an underutilized asset. And we decided to begin an exploration of what we could do with it. From there, Peggy Firth, along with her longtime friend Barbara Bank, began to push the notion. Fresh pressed grape pumice is really kind of an active ingredient, and we needed to stabilize it by drying and then milling it so it would be appropriate as a food ingredient. No one had really studied the molecular composition of what's in this Chardonnay mark, and furthermore, what does it taste like? So we began those explorations in collaboration with UC Davis scientists. And that's when this sweet concept came to fruition. Actually, there's some really interesting stuff going on in white wine. I think for everyone, when I tell them that Chardonnay is a superfood, they're either a little skeptical or they're a little surprised. The potential of Chardonnay Mark, in terms of that trifecta of both sensory, health impacts, but still the sustainable food system. We actually have managed to get all three. So when it comes to food innovation, Wellvine is actually something of a unicorn. 
That's a proprietary ingredient, first of its kind, and we were pleasantly surprised to learn that it's full of antioxidants, dietary flavanols, and other fibers that enhance gut health. And we have something that's unique, first in class, and so we thought to explore this as a consumer-facing ingredient, we would pair it with dark chocolate, which is also known for its health attributes and is something consumers love to taste. Wine and chocolate, upcycled and earth-friendly, such a novel idea. Right now, it's only for the Chardonnay grapes, and that's a good place to start since Chardonnay as the wine is America's favorite wine, so we'd like to build the business to be compatible with that. Dried and milk grape skin, seeds and pulp that would typically be discarded after winemaking undergo a unique process to turn the residue into a nutrient-dense ingredient. There's not a lot you need to do to get me to try chocolate. <laughs> and you have such fabulous spread in front of us, so I would love to try some. Well, let's start with the dark chocolate with a smoked salt that is smoked over Chardonnay barrel staves. Okay. So for all the, both the wine-loving people and for the salt-loving people. Mm, mm, I love this, the salt this, in there. This might be your chocolate. Mm -hmm. The next one to try would be the tart cherry and cocoa nibs. And the okay. tart cherry uh, fruit complements. Oh, I love chocolate and fruit. Yeah, some of the fruity flavors that come through in chocolate. And so that complements it. Very good, very good. And then we have our almonds and dark chocolate, but this also has a little bit of the pink Himalayan. Pink Himalayan. Salt. I'm being spoiled. You are. After getting a taste of the luxury chocolate straight off the chalk cootery board, I can attest to its deliciousness. That's actually quite good too. The California almond industry, you can support <laughs> two of the great agricultural <laughs> economies exactly. in one product. Mm -hmm. And it's all California. It's all California. It has no alcohol content because, again, it's just fresh pressed grapes. We could walk out in the vineyard and taste fresh Chardonnay. There's no alcohol in the grape cluster. However, vine to bar chocolate does pair well with a glass of wine too. Most of our culinary friends and chefs all say, well, we pair our chocolate with red wines, but because of the complementary flavors from the Wellvine Chardonnay Mark, it actually brightens and elevates the bitter flavors in dark chocolate. We're getting compliments on how surprised they are that there is a superfood ingredient included with the dark chocolate and the true essence of chocolate comes forward as well as the fruit essence of the Chardonnay. Be sure to join us again next week when we get a sky-high view of farming. Plus, it's time to make some cheese. Take care and we'll see you on the next California Bountiful.